Hey everybody, I'm Katie Lee and I'm in my kitchen at home getting ready for Friendsgiving. So I always have a bunch of people staying at my house. That's kind of the problem with an extra guest bedroom, right? <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, so I like to have something really nice and fun for the morning. Coffee talk is probably my favorite time with my guest. And what goes better with coffee talk than monkey bread? And since it's Thanksgiving, I'm doing pumpkin monkey bread, okay? So this time of year, you always have a bunch of canned pumpkin around and sometimes little remnants in the cans. You know, you'll end up with like an extra half a cup or you know, a few spoonfuls. Sometimes I throw them into my yogurt. Other times I'll mix it into some oatmeal, but I'm gonna make a pumpkin butter for the monkey bread. So I've just got some of that canned pumpkin here. Ooh, that's nice and hot. You see, this is what happens when I wear cream in the kitchen. I'm probably gonna end up with orange specks all over me. And some butter goes in that. Let's burn that heat down. And then, can I turn it down or up? <laughs> okay, now some brown sugar, the good stuff. Now, if you haven't had monkey bread before, monkey bread is made with canned biscuits, or I suppose you could do homemade. And you take them and you cut them into little pieces, you roll them in balls. Typically, you roll them into a cinnamon sugar mixture and butter and put them in a butt pan. After it bakes, you pick it apart and eat each one of those little balls individually. We used to always have it at my friend Erica's house. She would have a slumber party and we would have monkey bread. And it was one of those things we'd have at night and we'd sit around and girl talk and laugh and giggle and eat monkey bread. Now I really like it with coffee. So to me, it's the best thing to have in the morning with breakfast. You know, just sit around in your bathroom, talk about the night before, you know, what happened, who was silly, who maybe had too much to drink, <laughs> and just enjoy time with friends. So this pumpkin butter is coming together really nicely. Look at that brown sugar and pumpkin and butter. It smells so yummy. It really smells like holiday time. Now I'm gonna just let that continue to melt and get working on the rest. Oh, and I almost forgot a little bit of salt. So whenever you make something sweet, adding a touch of salt to it, just really intensifies the flavor. So just gonna mix that in. All right, I will let that sit and get started on the rest. Okay, so next up, the cinnamon and sugar. Well, it's not really cinnamon. That's where my little spin comes in with the pumpkin. It's pumpkin pie spice mix, okay? So if you're really into pumpkin spice lattes, I know that those are so like 2012, but I still kind of like them, just like I still really like a kale salad. So you just take that pumpkin pie spice mixture, mix it into a little bit of sugar, and that's just gonna give this a little extra flavor. So there's nutmeg in there and cloves. You could do this with just straight up cinnamon and be just fine. You could put together your own little mixture if you like more nutmeg or more cloves, add a little ginger to it. You could really customize this. Also that pumpkin butter would be really good on its own just spread on toast. So maybe you wanna make that just on its own too. All right, now on to the biscuits. This is my favorite part. I want it to pop. Is it gonna pop? Ah, there it goes. <laughs> It reminds me of like, you know, the little plastic thing that you hit the bubbles with. There's something very satisfying about that sound. I don't know what it is. It always makes me jump too, even when I'm expecting it. There we go. Ah. <laughs> okay. Now, when I was a kid, the only time I would ever have canned biscuits was with monkey bread because my grandma made the best honey biscuits you'd ever had in your life and we never had canned for biscuits. In fact, I would go stay all night with my friends and I'd come home and I'd say, they had canned biscuits. Isn't that terrible? Like what a snobby little kid I was. I was like throwing shade at everyone with their canned biscuits, but I like them like this. So Friendsgiving to me is really fun. I, it's something I always do, whether it's actually on Thanksgiving or a week before, doesn't really matter, but 
I live in New York, my family lives in West Virginia, and if I can't make it home for Thanksgiving, I like to be with my friends and celebrate with them, you know? It's kind of like um, that saying, friends are the family we make for ourselves. So Friendsgiving is a good chance to celebrate that. And, uh, you know, I've had some good ones, a um, few that stick out in my mind. I've actually attended some other Friendsgivings. Bobby Flay always has a great Friendsgiving at his house. He, it's on Thanksgiving, and he has just a huge crew with about, um, you know, usually 20-some people. And he makes three giant turkeys, and he always has a theme. So, uh, you know, he might do, well... I know this will really come as a surprise, but Bobby will do a Southwest theme sometimes <laughs> for his Friendsgiving. <laughs> I usually keep my Friendsgiving pretty traditional. I like all those simple flavors. That's my one time when I'm not really experimenting with food. I do the classics. My turkey has just sage and butter. I put a little bit of maple syrup on it, actually. When I baste it, I mix it in with the basting broth and it just gives this really nice brown color to the turkey. It's kind of like if you want your turkey to look like it looks in a magazine, you do that. Now, I'm going to pull out of the oven. I've got another monkey bread going here because my friends, they're like me. They're big eaters, so i got to make extra. Oh, man, oh, man, does this look good. Wowzers. Take a look at that. This is what's to come. Okay, I'm gonna let that cool back here while we keep going on this. And this is a really easy recipe. You could actually get your friends in the kitchen and have them help you make it on Friendsgiving. Some of my favorite Thanksgiving foods, stuffing and mashed potatoes. I mean, I guess I'm kind of sensing a theme here. I like all the carbs. <laughs> and it's the one holiday that's all about food and just eating everything. Now, on the kitchen, we always do a Friendsgiving episode and have our friends over. This year, we had Ree Drummond, the pioneer woman, and Trisha Yearwood stopped by. Eddie Jackson was there. It was really, really, really fun. So I think, you know, when it's Friendsgiving, it's okay to ask your friends to bring stuff. You know, make it a potluck. And the host should be the one to, you know, do the bird. It's, your, it's like any potluck. The host should be the one who does the heavy lifting. So you need to do the protein and everybody else can bring a side. One of my favorite recipes for Friendsgiving, if I'm going to somebody else's, it's actually Jeff Morrow's recipe for mashed potatoes. So it's, I believe, his mom's recipe. And you make them ahead of time and you put them in a casserole dish and then put like a stick of butter on top of it and bake it. And that way you can actually do mashed potatoes ahead of time. Because it's one of those things I always remember my grandma being in the kitchen at the last minute mashing the potatoes. And it's like everybody's ready to eat and she was in there having to mash those potatoes at the very last minute getting them done. So Jeff's recipe really takes that out of the, the picture. You can do it a day ahead of time, two days ahead of time. I'm all about recipes to be done in advance. Uh, Reed Drummond on our Friendsgiving episode made a green bean casserole that was out of this world. It was not the green bean casserole recipe from the back of a soup can. This one was unreal. And she made it, I mean, it was very simple, you know, to do that instead of opening the can of soup to just make all the steps. I'm throw these little guys. So I'm just rolling these into balls and you know, if you could invite anybody to your Friendsgiving, who would it be? Hmm. You know, who comes to my mind first? I would love to have had Nora Ephron at a Friendsgiving. She's my favorite writer maybe ever, and she liked to cook. So I would have liked to have been able to have a meal with her and invite her over. And speaking of Nora Ephron, that makes me think of When Harry Met Sally which I always like to watch around the holidays. So I'd like to have Harry and Sally at my fantasy Friendsgiving as well. And hmm, would I have them before they got together or after they got together? I don't know, I guess after they got together. I'd like to know what happened with the two of them. Like, did they, you know, stay in love? Did they get divorced? You know? <laughs> 
what happened to Harry and Sally? These are the questions that I want the answers to. You know, I just would like to know. My other fantasy guest at my Friendsgiving, Ina Garten. Wouldn't it be nice to have Ina Garten at your Friendsgiving? I'd be a little bit nervous though. I'm not gonna lie. Ina's come here for lunch before. We had a little pizza lunch here at the house. And again, not gonna lie, I was a little nervous having Ina over, but we had a great time. She's terrific. All right, keep rolling these balls. Okay. <laughs> oh geez, favorite Friendsgiving memories? Years ago, it's gotta be now maybe 10 years ago, one of my very best friends, Gretchen, love her to death, she cannot cook. And she really wanted to help. So I told her, okay, you can make the mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes, here we are again at mashed potatoes. Why is something so simple give us so much grief? So I had already cut up the potatoes. I had them in the water boiling. So there really wasn't much for her to do. It was very supervised, you know, I could just tell her how much liquid to put in, tell her, you know, the butter and she could mash. Well, I was busy doing other things and we're talking and I look over at the stove and I say, Gretchen, what are you doing? While the potatoes were in the water boiling, she was mashing them. <laughs> so instead of mashed potatoes that year, we had potato soup. <laughs> and we decided to make it kind of artistic and we kind of drizzled it on the plate first before everybody put their food onto it. All right, we're almost done with these. This is the longest part. You got kids? Your kids should be rolling the biscuit dough, okay? Almost done. <sighs> this is my workout today, rolling biscuit dough. I'm actually like working up a sweat. And now, I'm gonna take that pumpkin pie spice and sugar mixture, give it a nice little stir, and just take it all over those. Now, when I used to make this as a kid, I would individually roll each ball in the sugar, but ain't nobody got time for that. So just do it in one big bowl, roll it all together. They're all gonna get coated, yep. I love the way this pumpkin pie spice smells. I mean, it really just smells like Thanksgiving to me, or Friendsgiving, that is. Just get it all nice and coated. And see, it's pretty fast. All right, I'm gonna brush my hands off. Give them a quick little rinse. I mean, I hope that this actually makes it to my friends because I might have to eat a lot of it. It's really tasty smelling. Okay, bunt cake pan. Sprayed it with a little nonstick spray. And I'm just gonna take a few of these, put them in here. And then I'm gonna put some of my pumpkin butter. Now don't put a lot in here because you want the pumpkin butter to get onto the bottom of the pan so that it caramelizes. So you can even put the pumpkin butter down first. It's really hard to mess this up. So, little goes on. Okay, let's put some more. This is a recipe that would also be great for Christmas morning. If you wanna make something in advance, put it all together and then Christmas morning, get up and pop it in the oven. And while everybody's open in presents, it can be baking. Okay, more of that pumpkin butter. Yes. Mm. Who out there likes pumpkin pie? I'm a pumpkin pie girl. I know some people think it's, you know, not their favorite, that it's just there out of tradition. I happen to love it. Okay, and the last bit, I'm gonna, there's some extra sugar in the bottom of this. I'm just gonna put that in there too. Why not? There's no reason not to add it. It is Friendsgiving and nobody is watching. All right, put the rest on there. Now when this goes into the oven, it's gonna puff up. When the biscuits are in the heat, it actually makes them rise. There's a lot of baking powder in biscuits and that's what makes them get nice and puffy and flaky and there's so much butter in these biscuits. 
and the pumpkin butter. It's going to be very decadent. I'm all about holiday decadence. Someone once asked me about lightening up the holidays and I said, it's really not the time. <laughs> I am all for the workout post-holiday, but on the actual day, mm -mm. All right, rinsing the hands off. And I'm gonna put this into the oven to bake. It's at 350 degrees. And that's going to take mm, about 35 minutes. Okay. Clean up a little. And it's time to make the real good stuff, the glaze. Because, you know, there's not enough going on in this. So I've got some confectioner sugar and more of that yummy pumpkin pie spice mixture. You know, if you wanted to give this a little bit of a spin and make it like a pumpkin spice latte, you could add some instant espresso powder to this. And that would be a nice little spin. And also really good with your coffee. This is a really good one too, if you're gonna have like a cookie exchange party, you could have this as a centerpiece. It's not a cookie, but you know, everybody can still take a little bit and share it. Now, I love orange with pumpkin pie. I think it just adds something really nice to it, nice bright element, especially when there's so much sugar going on. But if you're not into the orange flavoring, just use a little bit of milk instead. You could use um, heavy cream. I like to add about a tablespoon of orange zest to it. I think it's just very holiday as well. And you just wanna go around with the orange Avoid getting any of the white of the peel. Just want the nice orange part. Gosh, this smells so yummy. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so we need a little bit of orange juice and that's what's gonna give us our glaze. So I wanna avoid the seeds, so I just use this little strainer here. And I'm gonna use about three or four tablespoons. Here we go. Mm. What's better than fresh squeezed orange juice in the morning, really? I mean, that might be one of my favorite things about staying in a hotel, is fresh squeezed orange juice. So it's very few and far between that I actually do that at home. I'd like to be the kind of person who gets up and makes freshly squeezed orange juice. I bet my friends staying with me wish even more that I was the kind of person who got up and made freshly squeezed orange juice. Okay, so it still looks a little thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit more juice. And you can kind of eyeball it. You don't want it to be too thin because the monkey bread's still gonna be hot out of the oven. And if it's too thin, it'll just run off. But you don't want it to be too thick either because then it'll just be clumpy. We're getting there. It's almost there. Just a little bit more. Go. Mm. Monkey bread kind of reminds me of just like a giant cinnamon roll. My grandma always made homemade cinnamon rolls. She would make this yeast dough. It was actually the same dough that she would make to make rolls um, when we do Thanksgiving. And she'd make these big cinnamon rolls. They were so delicious. Oddly enough, she always, whenever we had stir fry, she made cinnamon rolls to go with chicken stir fry. I know that sounds so crazy. I think it's because like back in the 60s, they thought cinnamon was a really exotic spice and that must have been the train of thought. Either that or she just wanted cinnamon rolls with stir fry. <laughs> okay, this looks like a good consistency. See that nice glaze? I feel like I need to try it though, just for good measure. Mmm, mmm. That tastes like holiday to me. The pumpkin pie spice having the clove and cinnamon in there, nutmeg with orange. You guys, you're in for a treat. You are in for a treat, I tell you. All right, I'm getting rid of this stuff. I'll clean up later. Let's get to that monkey bread. I'm so glad that I made an extra. I really need to have a bite. No one's gonna know. You're not telling, right? Okay. 
Now take a look at that. See the pumpkin butter in there that's coming out? Ooh, that just made me think. You could also do this with apple butter. Wouldn't that be good? Maybe put like some little chunks of apple in there. Okay, so to flip this out, this is where I always hold my breath. Like, is it gonna flip? It's cool enough. warm. You can see the steam coming out of it. So I'm just going to put a little glaze on it so it doesn't melt too much. Yes. Mm. You can always serve it with extra glaze. It's like when you share a pan of cinnamon rolls with friends or really anything like if it's a pizza, if it's nachos, whatever. I'm always looking for like the best piece and the best bite. With cinnamon rolls, it's which one has the most frosting. Nachos, which one has the most cheese. Pizza, the biggest slice, obviously. Oh, gosh. So, I might serve this just with an extra bowl of glaze. Okay, there it is. Now, I'm not going to wait on my friends. That's why I have extra. Which one is the perfect bite? I think I'm going in here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. I'm just going to give it a little dip. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, first of all, hot anything out of the oven and having that sweet pumpkin-y flavor mixed with the spices and then the zing of the orange on there and the extra sugar. The biscuit dough is nice and soft on the inside, but has a slight little crunch on the outside from where it baked. <sighs> Friendsgiving is going to be a hit. We're going to have some serious coffee talk with this. Mm. Be sure to make it for your friends. Enjoy your Friendsgiving. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Thanks for hanging out with me here in my kitchen. Love you guys. Happy Friendsgiving!